Hello, it's uh, Bini here. Today is 16 of June. Um, it's back to the STI index and the one trade to talk about. Today, not only about a trade. Uh, I hope that you know by going through the trade day by day daily, I would want to share uh, you know some useful technique to you for you. All right. So today, I'm just going to let you understand the simple technique. You know, uh, how do you choose a trade? Okay. Now let's take a look into STI first. Uh, so as predicted, 3,100 was the support, the short-term support, and price had sort of, um, you know, at this moment, close above the previous low. All right. So if price is able to maintain um, this low, this high point here, that means to close the gap and to, uh, you know, close at this particular level which is about 3140 or even 3150 so this is good enough because then we would have a wash and means of this low point here all right so um, if you want to know what is wash and means uh, at the right up there i have included the free course that i put in a talk about so we can understand more about wash and means and of course the next level for sti to test would be this level here that's about 3170 okay i would really think that to close this gap so that's about 3180 all right all right let's take a look at one trade to look at today and the trade is uh euro aussie so it's a forex pair not like the uh, earlier videos that i did on uh, stocks all right so why is it that i want to take a look into euro aussie uh just give you a little background so for example in my trade i like to color code so for example um green color is to look for sell um matte color magenta color is to look for buy so for example at the bottom here uh, at this place here i was actually looking for a buy okay and then at this place here because it's a green color i was actually looking for a sell but with color that means that with, with the fact that i'm seeing a green color I know that probably I'm waiting for a trade and probably this trade is on the uh, sell side. All right. But why is it that I want to choose this trade? Okay. So uh, it brings back into comparison. Okay. Now, one of the things that we, we know of in terms of the concept, right, is that we should always sell when it's near to a resistance. Okay. So that's a concept. Now, however, apart from just this concept, there is a key difference between uh, you know, uh, having a, a trade that can run a lot versus a trade that doesn't. Okay, so let me just show you another another stock, right? That has also the green, another sorry another you uh, forex pair that has also that green line, all right, and that is also near to a resistance. Okay, so for example, this trade here, which is dollar yen, had a green line. Okay, so there's a green line. Yes, in fact, there was a sell. Right, and uh, but it doesn't really move a lot. So what is the difference between this trade here that is also near to a resistance? Okay, so let me just show you where is that resistance. Okay, so I think that we need to go to the month chart to see that resistance. So the resistance came in as a historical high resistance. You see, I can't even actually see that resistance in the day or the week chart. I have to see that into the month chart. Right, so it's into that um, month resistance. Okay, about one hundred thirty-five. Now, then what is the difference between um, the trade in dollar yen? So this is the trade in dollar yen, all right? And then this is the trade in uh, Euro Aussie. That, that was the trade I did yesterday. What's the key difference here? All right. At the place that I did the trade yesterday, then dollar yen all right, made a new high. Meaning that, you know, if you compare the price of dollar yen, this place that that um that had a sell signal versus the previous high so this is a new high so this is actually a higher high so it must be really very bullish for price to make a higher high which is a new high right okay now if you take a look at euro aussie this trade here uh, that's where things becomes interesting right at the place that i've traded in this place here okay so that's the black bar that i've traded in right Okay, now next question we'll ask is that did Euro Aussie make a new high? So even though dollar yen was at the resistance, but dollar yen didn't make dollar yen make a new high. So Euro Aussie is also at a resistance. Okay, it was at it was at the resistance yesterday. So we can see, for example, horizontally there's a resistance. 
you know, when you draw a trend line as a resistance, the question is whether Euro Aussie made a new high. The answer is very clear. No, Euro Aussie did not make a new high. So when Euro Aussie didn't make a new high, it sees a lot about the strength strength of Euro Aussie. Okay, so both dollar yen and Euro Aussie they are at a resistance. But the fact that dollar yen make a new high suggests that momentum wise it is a very strong one. But Euro Aussie did not make a new high. So this suggests that if you want to go to short for example, Euro Aussie or the short dollar yen, you want to choose Euro Aussie because dollar yen was probably moving, um, you know, at a speed of 300 km per hour. Whereas, all right, Euro Aussie is probably resisted and then kept at a speed of 100 km per hour. So, this is the key difference here, even though both of them are at a resistance. Okay, so um, it's not that we can't trade into. Uh, you know, for example, right into a key data, all right, like FOMC, we can still do that, but we just have to find pairs which are, you know, showing that, uh, you know, very clean uh, resistance or support level. Next is to not to be involved in pairs which are directly going to be impacted by, you know, for example, FOMC last night, which is clear, clear clearly the stock indexes will be affected. Um, likewise, you know, any pairs with the dollar will be affected because that is a US driven, you know, rate decision. Alright, so this trade, do we have good result? Yes, you know, so this trade, if you had uh, this trade in, you know, you probably be making, you know, a very neat, nice 100 pips movement. Alright, and uh, nice that I was actually uh, in the cinema. Alright, I didn't miss the trade, but I didn't miss the show as well. And when I came out, you know, I was already in a profit. Right, so the other trade which um, uh, didn't, uh, you know, show a, uh, a, a same high was actually this one here. Alright, so it's the same idea. Alright, the idea is that at the place where, you know, uh, where we put in the trade, okay, where, where it's going to be bearish, uh, this one doesn't even make the same high. What it did is that, you know, at this place where there was a trade going on, it made actually a lower high, okay? So this was the high, alright, it made a lower high. So just a very simple, um, you know, uh, understanding of the highs and low is going to make a difference to your trading. So for example, dollar yen, alright, so that's U, J, what it did is actually make a new high and it hit a resistance. Okay, so that's dollar yen. Now the other one is E, Euro versus Aussie, EA. Alright, what it did is that it's at the resistance but it made actually a similar high. Okay, and then it's hit into a resistance. Okay, so that's our now, what happened to the this pair here that I point out, which is actually pound Aussie, all right? At the place that, you know, it's moved out, what it did was it made actually a lower high, okay? So, it's still a resistance. We can see a bit of a, a very strong resistance coming inside here, all right? And then that's your resistance, okay? But, you know, the key difference is that these made a lower high. So which one is preferred even though the theory says that oh yeah at the resistance you sell then therefore this is not preferred so this is preferred and then this is preferred okay so one of the things I always tell my students expand your trade instruments you don't need to always trade the same thing all right learn the same thing expand into your trade instruments so that at any one point of time, you have the best setup for your trades.